This is what Steinsgate taught me about life. No, not Kurish's speech about infinity, but actually what comes next. <laughs> the existential question at the heart of any story like Steinsgate is, if there are infinite world lines, infinite versions of ourselves across the infinite infinity of the universe, why does our narrow, singular experience even matter? What Kurisu teaches us is that if we don't know what happened to the other world lines, if they're all merely possibilities, then what matters isn't the universe, it's our perspective. It matters not despite our narrow experience, but rather because of it. Each of our lives are valuable, not because they're unique, but because they're here. If you'll let me be a little fucking pretentious for a second, I want to bring up this quote from Shakespeare. Out! Out, brief candle! Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and fruts his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Life itself is meaningless. It's short, stupid, and above all, utterly insignificant. But what Kurisu is giving us here is a counterpoint to all of that. Sure, life is ultimately meaningless. We are, no matter how you look at it, a trivial speck in some empty corner of a vast, empty universe. But that doesn't matter. When Kurisu comes running back to the lab, it's because this experience matters. Maybe there are infinite Kurisus across infinite world lines. Maybe there aren't. Maybe infinite Okabes and infinite Kurisus share infinite kisses across the infinite reach of time and space. But who's to say? None of them matter because what matters is this Kurisu and this Okabe in the here and now. In this world line, in this lab, this Kurisu needs to tell this Okabe that she loves him. It's not that we exist that matters, it's that we live that does. And that's why Kurisu's pride cannot let her live when Mayuri's life is in danger. It's not her life that matters, it's how she lives that does. To have lived, loved, to have experienced the joys of being alive, that is what gives our existence meaning. A hundred, a thousand, ten thousand years from now, almost none of us will be remembered by the sands of time. But that isn't what's important. The past, the future, to us, do not, and will never exist. What matters to us is the here and now. And isn't that fucking beautiful? Welcome back, by the way, to my series analyzing in depth literally every single episode of Steinsgate. This is episode 22. People often talk about Mayuri's slap, but I like this one just as much. <laughs> When Kurisu says that it's only by working together that they've come this far, it hits Okabe so much because he knows how true it is. He can't do anything alone. It's always been her. It's Kurisu that's brought him this far. All of it. Everything he's done. Everything he will do. It's all thanks to Kurisu. There is no one in the universe like her. It's this melancholic little moment, the joy of love, yet the heartbreak of having to say goodbye. It's the juxtaposition of the happiest and saddest moment of his life all at once, and it's fucking beautiful. And so it's here, in this episode, that time seems to stretch on forever, while at the same time, coming to a complete stop. Huddled together in the dark stairwell, Okabe and Kurisu seek shelter from the rain, desperately wanting to leave this moment behind, while wishing it would never end. So when Okabe runs out into the cold rain, back to the lab, it's not just the traffic signals that have come to a standstill this time, but the world itself. The universe. Okabe. Time. All of it seems perfectly still. And yet, time marches on as Okabe runs back to the lab, because this stillness, this happiness with Kurisu is only temporary. Time only means anything because it moves ever, ever on. But just for an instant, in this one moment, it's okay if it does not, as the world somehow becomes even stiller when Kurisu grabs this man and kisses him. <laughs> and
And as Kurisu stands there and picks up the pieces of this broken man, we hear again the drip, drip, drip of the faucet, reminding us of the stillness of this moment in time caught up in the inevitability of the universe. Before, we heard it when Okabe was sitting alone in the lab, contemplating Mayuri's fate, stuck between zero and infinity. And here we hear the same dripping of the faucet, the same stillness, the same infinity, only this time, he's not alone. And it's all the more painful because of it. So despite the stillness of this moment, Kurisu laments the sudden passage of time, because it is and yet isn't moving. That's the thing about time. A single moment can be an instant or an eternity, depending on your perspective. And here's what I love so much about Steinsgate, besides the 50 million other things. It's deeply, fiercely intelligent, and yet this only makes it even more human. The Observer is a fundamental property of quantum mechanics. It's a fundamental property of the universe. Time in this episode flows by so slowly, and yet so, so very quickly. And so that's why when they finally part ways, when Okabe sees her off at Akihabara Station, Kurisu throws that bottle of Dr. Pepper, and then the instant Okabe turns around, she disappears without a trace into the morning. And as she leaves, we gaze upon the world of Akihabara and find it so still and empty, as if, again, time has come to a complete stop. Come to a world where only the two of them exist, and yet Kurisu doesn't. It's a world with only two of them, and in it, Okabe is alone. So when Kurisu barges into the lab, this one moment, as reading Steiner activates, as Okabe fades across world lines, seems to stretch on forever. <laughs> Time in this episode is all things. It's slow, it's fast, and yet it's completely and utterly still. And this, this right here, is the perfect ending. The girl is saved, the world is at peace, everything is returned to how it should be. And Okabe standing there with a gaping, kurisu-shaped hole in his heart is when he most needs the mad scientist, when he most needs to be Hyo and Kyoma. But it's here that Kyoma dies. Steinsgate ends with the death of Hō and Kyoma, a casualty of the war of the time machine. Because none of this really had to happen. She was always dead. This heartbreak is merely the consequence of playing with time, and what the universe has left him with is a ghost. It's a melancholy, sad, perfect ending to maybe the greatest love story of all time. And yet, it somehow manages to take perfection and turn it into something beyond perfection. Turn it into something absolutely legendary. If you like this video, you'd be doing me a favor by stepping on the like button. And as always, thank you so much for your time, friends, and I'll see you next week for the start of that legendary ending. <laughs>